I'd like to call this meeting of the Town of Rhymick Planning Board to order. Uh, first order of business is the meeting agenda, I believe, stands as published. I'd like to hear a motion to accept Art's meeting uh, min meeting notes. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Very good. And um, highlight of the evening, I would like to schedule a special meeting for July 7th at 6.30. We're going to have a few rollovers from tonight that I'd like to be able to, to address that night. So I've sort of spoken to you and I think you all can make it. So could I, and what we will do is we will develop that agenda as we go on tonight. So by the conclusion of tonight's meeting, we will know what the agenda for that meeting will be. Um, could I have a motion to meet on July 7th at 6.30? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Uh, the, My the, wife. The clerk, <laughs> the, 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 the clerk for the planning board right is thrilled. <laughs> the clerk for the planning board is absolutely thrilled. Uh, our first public hearing is in a few minutes. I'd like to announce that uh, the town board has a has a uh, hired a zoning enforcement officer for the town of Rhinebeck. It is Ron Evangelista, who you we've huh. worked with for years. He was with Morris for many years. He uh, has functioned as a zoning enforcement officer in the town of Goshen and in the town of Beekman. So he, he knows how to do it, and he's fairly familiar with our zoning laws, probably familiar as anyone can be with our zoning law. And I'll be meeting with him tomorrow to give him all the bad news, and um, <laughs> he'll be starting on Tuesday. Yeah. So uh, I think he's a ter terrific uh, hire for the town. I think he'll do a terrific job for us. And, so, uh, so you're going to resign? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the town board said after the last experience, maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> so. So I, I will they be. Just, they just put him on vacation. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. No more pay. No more. No more raise for you. Right. I'll, I'll be in the bullpen, called in when you know. So that's. I think we're very lucky to have Ron. I think he'll do a great job for us. Uh, does anyone else have any other announcements, comments? Anything else? We just sit here in silence for. Uh, we can discuss the, Z, the two ZBA. We have two ZBA uh, referrals um, for area variances. And I think that the situation is both of them are type one actions for, for Mr. Duffy and for Carolyn Blackwood. Um, we're not going to be in a position tonight to complete the seeker process. So aren't a, do we need to complete the seeker process just to make a recommendation because they're not taking an action? Or it's just a recommendation. So and I, was it envisioned by the town board when they put this provision in that we would not necessarily have completed the seeker process within the 30 days after referral from the ZBA? Well, the, I think the planning board's position to date has been uh, in making a recommendation to the ZBA uh, to include uh, the planning board's position as to whether or not there are any planning or environmental issues involved uh, with respect to the applications mm -hmm. that are before the ZBA. Um, in a matter of a type one action where coordinated review is being conducted by the planning board, uh, it seems that it might be premature uh, for the planning board to make a recommendation to the ZBA without having first uh, adopted a secret position, including consideration of the uh, the coastal policies. Okay. That's the uh, you know that's kind of the quandary. On the other hand, uh, we clearly recognize that under coordinated review, the ZBA uh, cannot act until. The planning board, as lead agency, has uh, completed uh, secret compliance. Ergo, I think that's the reason for okay. your scheduling of the July 7th special well, meeting. Well, it is. Special meeting. Uh, we will complete seeker and the coastal assessment and everything on our July 7th meeting, at which point we could then make a recommendation to the ZBA since they can't act until we do that anyway. So we would still be in a timely manner to make a recommendation to them on both of those issues. Now, with respect to, to my meeting notes, uh, to the degree that that comment on my part um, and Michael's um, follow-up uh, departs from what it says in the and may, may say in my meeting notes I think it's consistent with the position with respect to Blackwood which is not on the agenda this evening except for in the, in the matter of the referral. Mm -hmm. uh, with respect to Duffy uh, I felt that uh, the board uh, might be in a position tonight to consider uh, a secret determination completion of the part two secret determination uh, and uh, coastal consistency determination um, You've informed me uh, that the um, um, CAB in its WAC role has asked for additional time uh, to make its report to the planning board concerning <coughs> coastal policies. And that uh, then would, uh, uh, assuming you honor that particular request, that precludes your opportunity to issue that statement of consistency this evening. 
But we can do that on the 7th. But you could do it on the 7th. And wrap uh, that all up. Uh, by requesting that uh, uh, the CAB's report or the WAC's report be received by the 7th. And I think that is unarguably uh, beyond the 30-day period uh, that they would have uh, under the uh, under uh, town code section. I know. 18. Brian's out here. So you're going to get that to us by the 7th? Yes. Could I just ask that if it's being adjourned until the 7th, would it be possible for Brian and the CAB to get the comments in 24 hours before that or oh, yeah. by the morning so that the applicant has an opportunity to see them? We appreciate the the CAB's actions today and letting us know sure. as soon as possible. But if we could have them um, one business day in advance, that sure. would be greatly appreciated. So in other words, possible. if we could have them by the 4th or the 3rd of July, since the 4th is Friday and then yeah. Saturday, Sunday, so you have them. That would be great. So what do you say, Ryan? <laughs> sure, just do it. Do it. Mr. Chairman, I'll have to check in with the other members of the board and I'll Okay, and I'll get back and I'll get back to you by then too. Okay, thank you. You'll you'll also see based upon uh, another action that I contemplate the board taking this evening at conclusion of wherever we go with the public hearing that I'm going to need that information too before the seventh. Right. Right. Uh, because uh, well, I'll just, I'll just indicate what that action might be. I'm anticipating that uh, I will be directed this evening to prepare. Uh, the draft of a secret determination and consistency statement for the board's consideration on the 7th. Right. Okay, and as luck would have it, we are we're ready for our first public hearing, and that would be uh, Robert Duffy, 195 and 31 Car 195 River Road, 31 Carmel Drive, Subdivision Plat, Lot Consolidation, Special Use Permits, Wetlands Permit, and Site Plan. Conduct of conduct of combined public hearing on applications for special use permits and site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 zoning. Application for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101 subdivision of land and application for wetlands permit under Town Code Chapter 120. Wetlands in the matter of the proposed single family residential development of consolidated 44.096 acre parcels. Uh, with site landscaping improvements, guest accommodations, including two guest cottages and one detached accessory dwelling and other accessory structures in the Historic Preservation Zoning District, the Hudson River National Historic Landmarks District, the Estates District's scenic area of statewide significance, and the Town of Rhinebeck Local Waterfront Revitalization Area, being a type 1 action under seeker and a matter pending applications for area variance before the ZBA. Um, and I think what we're going to get tonight is just a final wrap-up overview of of the applications that they're before the planning board. Um, That's the changes. Any any changes, just the final, this is this is what we have. Let's get in the record first that the legal notice requirement has been met yes. uh, for this particular date. Yes. That has been and filed with the Thank you. So, uh, good evening. Um, Thank you. Tonight, I'm just going to go through two two sections of things. One is um, some some items that were submitted to you last week, um, which aren't necessarily new items. They're just more analysis of um, existing items um, on the project. Um, as a quick um, prior prior to that, as a quick overview of the plan. Um, um, you know, since last month when we met, um, as you recall, the, the plans in general um, have been downsized. Um, Barn two uh, has been reduced in size, and this was done some time ago, um, from two stories to one story, um, from more than 2,000 square feet to less than 1,000 square feet. Um, both of the barns, this barn here as well as this barn, have um, been faced in fieldstone. Um, the accessory guest quarters, two of which, one is here, one is here, um, have been uh, reduced in scale. Also, barn one, which is existing, which is this guy, if we go in closer, um, is, is the only accessory dwelling unit, and both of these have been convert, uh, switched to guest cottages, um, meaning that there are no kitchens. Uh, also, they're quite small in, in scale. 
Um, the project in general um, has a net reduction in imperviousness um, in terms of the SWIP report, at least, um, given the reduction of the, uh, the removal of the convent. Um, the total square feet being constructed is 3,086, uh, sorry, 3,086, uh, of which 1,136 square feet is from the existing barn one. Um, so that's just a quick overview as a sort of catch up. Um, as as uh, in regards to the items um, submitted last week, um, there's an archaeological phase one data uh, relating to the relocated septic system. Um, so as you recall, we, we did remove the septic system from this area over to this area. Um, and, and that promoted a, um, a requirement for um, uh, an expanded archaeological phase one um, and so for the area that had not been tested over here. Um, this uh, work has been done and, um, and we did receive a short report which was submitted to you last week um, stating their, their recommendation that no, no further work um, be done. Um, and they will, they will submit a full report for all of the work that's been done throughout the site, uh, I believe in uh, three to four weeks. That's to be determined the exact date. The next item is um, the, the existing fire hy hydrant on the site. There's an existing hydrant um, basically right here. Um, there's been some question and concern about the, the location and the access of that um, from the neighbor um, to the south in Aster, Aster Quartz. And we've looked to, um, we, we've, submitted, we've submitted basically a color key plan map and a memorandum. Uh, the memorandum summarizes the existing access by fire trucks. Um, I'm gonna just jump for a second. Um, step back, the key, the key point here is that the Duffy proposal does not change any access routes for the fire trucks or access to the fire hydrant in any way uh, from what is currently existing. Um, we, we met with the fire chief um, for Rhinecliff because we wanted to make sure that we, we were sort of in compliance and not creating any issues. Um, this, is Fern, this is Ferncliff Drive, which is not on the property, but the, the fire chief has ex explained that this is the preferred route for, for any fire trucks to enter the site because of the size of the trucks and the turn radiuses and the existing um, uh, um, stone walls both here and the gate that's here. Um, both of these, the fire trucks can fit through, but the turning radius is very difficult actually here. But here the fire trucks actually have said that they can't fit through that existing gate. So any access to either of these two properties would best be done through this, through this road. And then the, the trucks would sort of move through to a fire, to, to the, the space in general as need be, any buildings here, um, and then to the fire hydrant here. Um, if they needed to get to here, they, they could come through this way. Uh, they could also come through this way and, and that they, they do have the right to go through the property. The existing security gate, as we've mentioned before, does have access for the fire department to get in through a Knox box, um, which, which means basically that they're given a key. That key can open up this box and that box can open the, the, the gate. Um, also in loss, in loss of emergency, the gate is open anyway um, for both that for both this uh, security gate as well as this security gate. Um, so, so in essence, I mean, point, point, point being that um, the access is still the same as it has been. So nothing really uh, outside of the, the security gates, which, which do have access, have, have changed access to the existing fire hydrant, which is here. Um, Oh, no, 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 that's great. Um, the, the, the next and last item here on, on my list is, is lighting. So there's also been a, um, uh, a few just sort of, um, or one specific um, comment or request about lighting in, in this area. And this is not new lighting. This is the same lighting that's been on the plans the whole time. So it's just an analysis. Um, I'm just going to read this. Um, some of the lighting details are, uh, are uh, sorry. 
Okay. All of the proposed lighting on the Duffy property is, is down lighting, with the exception of six small directional lights on the walkway leading from the courtyard to the pool. So that's in this area here. Um, the the specification sheet that's that were submitted to to you with this package last week uh, give detailed information on the fixture that's being referred to. Uh, these small fixtures will be directed at the Coosa dogwood dogwood trees that line both sides of this walkway. Uh, they have a 20 watt MR16 bulb with an light intensity of 180 lumens per fixture. And just a quick. Um, um, Comparison: um, a 60 watt light bulb is 855 lumens. Um, so, so this this fixture, these fixtures again are 180 lumens, uh, much less than 855. Uh, additionally, these lights are shielded by a small hood, preventing them from scattering any light beyond the trees. Uh, the shielding far surpasses the requirements of the town code, which only require shielding of light sources over 2,000 lumens, so again, 180 lumens. Um, we believe that these six small lights fall within the provisions of section 125-56.f.4. Uh, in other words, that they are landscape design element and integral to the aesthetic value of the design. Uh, the planning board does have the authority under 125-56.f.4 to accept these lights as such a landscaping design element, and we ask that you do so as part of your site plan review. Uh, such lighting is exempt from the requirements of the lighting regulations and is not prohibit prohibited up lighting. Um, we've also done a, a uh, sort of quick photometric analysis because we do want to understand that um, if there is any light trespass, what, what that is or would be. Um, so this is a little difficult to read on a screen. The best way to really read it is on the 24 by 36 originals. But basically all of these little numbers show um, the light the light spillage from any of the lights coming from this area. Um, so basically, all of the numbers below this area are zero. So, and the light spillage, by the way, is, is, um, is, is measured in foot candles, which is essentially lumens per square feet. So again, coming back to the lumens, if you have 855 lumens, that's a 60 watt incandescent light. So, um, so I think that the, the point of this and this exercise was helpful for us, but it shows essentially that the light spillage is very small. Um, even the numbers within this area are looking at 0.1 and 0.2 lumens per square foot. Um, and then again down to zero after this. So all of the lighting in this area, the landscaping lighting is quite, um, quite small in wattage and lumens. Um, that's essentially it for, for sort of my portion. Um, I do want to turn this over to Jim Bates, who is our um, ecological analysis, uh, just to briefly describe any environmental analysis that's been done for the project. Before you go, I have a question for you. You said that you relocated the uh, septic system <coughs> and you took out the old one. Right. Did you abandon it? Or take it out. Um, I took it out of. We took it out of the plans. At ha okay, I'm concerned about digging it out of the ground. No, no. So, so okay, let me. I'm just. Yeah. You clear your words up. That's all. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yes. Okay. Um, you abandoned the old one and built a new one, basically. No. 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 That would be good. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, we abandoned the proposed. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. I understand. Thank you. Okay, that, that, that we can ask for. Uh, hello, my name is Jim Bates. My company is Ecological Analysis. I'm a wetlands and environmental and ecological consultant. Um, I was hired to, on basically in the town's request, to find out if there was any situations on the property, including with the DEC. <coughs> Upon doing that, uh, I delineated the wetlands, uh, both the DEC and the Army Corps wetlands on the property. I had the DEC come out and visit the site. We, they looked at not only the boundary of the DEC wetland, but in the areas that the trees were cut um, to see if there was any issues. I believe you got a report back from the DEC that stated that they were fine with that. Uh, I, had, I was also in conversations with uh, DEC's wildlife people on the endangered species for the site because that was a potential concern of the board. Uh, there is an eagle, but it's at the top of the cove, and it's over 2,000 feet from where there was any activity, let alone any continued activity. It's also uh, the eagle's sight line, 
So DEC was once, you know, also not concerned about that. Uh, the Indiana bats, they, because the populations are so low, they would prefer the trees been cut during the proper time window. However, they don't believe that there was any Indiana bats concerned because these were more healthy trees as far as that's concerned. Bats like snags and things like that. So that wasn't an issue. Um, I went and also looked at some of the other habitat concerns on the property, including the upper areas there. Um, and, and some of the other portions of the property and found that there really isn't a lot of habitat on this property and it's due to the manipulation of the property over its lifetimes. Um, there's debris and things like that which the construction companies were like, oh, we've got more stuff that we've got to carry out of here that's garbage. And there was a few wet spots here and there but they take water from basically from the roadway and they don't hold water long enough for them to have any vernal you know, abilities. There is the one area above the bridge down there, there is a pipe that goes underneath there that's plugged with leaves. So though it does hold water, it doesn't hold water on any regular cycle because it builds up and flushes out the based on pressure. And when the water goes, so, so there's no really good habitat there as well. Um, the area down below was Phragmites, and then the stream was basically catching effluent from the adjoining property. Uh, so <clears throat> that was pretty much the determination, and DEC Habitat and I pretty much agreed that this site's been manipulated so much that there's not a lot of good habitat that, that could be there. Um, and that's kind of the conclusions I have, unless the board has any questions or something from that. Hearing none, okay. thank you. <laughs> so that concludes our presentation. Again, we're happy to answer any questions, but we have presented in April, <coughs> May, uh, earlier right. this month and tonight. And uh, we believe that these communications together with all the documents that we've submitted uh, provide all the information needed to make a decision. Okay. Well, the one question I had, we did have a site visit of Melody and I and Ryan Dowden um, a week and a half ago. Monday met with you all out there. We discussed the different buffers, things like that, some discussion, and there was some discussion of enhancing some of the buffer areas that had been, the screening areas you discussed. If you could just sort of go over the conclusions that we came to, um, that would probably be helpful, because I know that's been one of the big concerns. We were discussing a type of plants, mixed plantings, deciduous and evergreen particularly along the area to preserve the view shed that basically goes down through that open meadow which is just Hold to on. the east of Mr. Duffy's property line. We're, we're talking yeah, about right here. down in there and we were discussing the uh, plantings along that area right. to the west right. that would screen Mr. Duffy's property from from the neighbor. Is that, is that so, so just to quickly explain what, right. what we talked about. So, so um, in, in the plans already are um, six new trees here, these light green trees, and six new trees here as well. Also already in the plans um, are noted uh, 30, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trip over this one, vibriniums. Viburnum. Thank you. Um, all, all throughout the area, right? So the, the idea with those is um, with, with the existing trees that have been sort of deer damaged, as well as uh, to enhance the screening in general, um, those will be planted throughout this area. We did discuss that those <coughs> plants should not obviously, well not obviously, those plants should not be in a straight line. They should be sort of scattered and they should be sort of um, mixed so that they look a little bit more um, natural. Um, uh, but again, those have been part of part of the plans at least since the May fifth um, submission, and um, and then we were also discussing that uh, trying to mix the evergreens. There was a discussion of just using white pine. I think there was a discussion of trying to mix pine and spruce so that we have right. some d diversity in there. Exactly. So, the, so the, the existing plans actually do have quite a bit of diversity within these twelve trees. Only two of them ha have been since May twelfth. Noted as white pine, okay. so so there is a bit of diversity already within those, um, and that diversity sort of it, it uh, as we've explained um, before, it also it, it pulls from what's existing, it also pulls from what was historically used from the site, and there's a balance you know between what makes sense now, mm -hmm. what was used in the past, and what is currently still on the on the site. And there was a possibility of including possibly a couple of deciduous oak or maple or something like that in there just to break up. Uh, yes. Uh, 
and, and uh, absolutely, that, that can be added in for, uh, several <coughs> deciduous that, that has not been done, but we can definitely do that, okay. yeah. That's, and I think that we, when we did the site visit, um, we had the, the whole crew there. We were able to go over both the ecological issues, the wetland issues, the habitat issues, the planting issues, like Michael was there, Michael Trapp was there, and um, I know that I was, you know, quite, quite pleased with what I heard, what I saw. We did survey the hillside where the cutting had taken place. The only apparent erosion had taken place from areas which the previous owner had done some work there and had washed out certain areas. Uh, nothing more has washed out that I can tell. The stumps are still in there holding soil. The plantings that have gone in appear to be surviving very nicely. Um, it's, it, it appears that the hillside has been stabilized, that that's not a problem at this point in time. Um, what else? Nothing else? Interesting. Yeah. Oh, yes. I have a note here. Would it be possible to get the archaeological report before we, so we have that in hand, for, or do we already have it? The, the, the short form was sent to you last week. The full report will be completed in three weeks. The full report covers everything that was done throughout the okay. entire site, but the short report that was done for the uh, area with, with the revised septic area was submitted to you last week. Do we have a, so the, we have a summary of the first work that was done and a summary of the second work? Yes, the summary, the summary from, from all of the work except for this was submitted on, May, on the May 5th, so it should be in the binder. So okay. the new information is this new report of the relocated right. septic, and you do have a short report okay. which states the conclusions now, but they're putting it together in a comprehensive okay. report. Obviously, we'll do our best to get it to you, but I think you have reports on the Okay. We'll, we'll look at that. We just wanted yeah, to make sure we had everything before the 7th yeah, of July. Sure. And I guess I would note that the State Office of Parks and Recreation uh, had no archaeological concerns. Uh, we did, but they didn't, so <laughs> we, we appreciate the work that was done. Of course. Um, members of the planning board, questions? Public. Art. No, public. Oh, public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Hi, I'm Jeff Romano, a resident of Tanner Rhinebeck and the former chair of the Conservation Advisory Board. And I will submit my comments to Joan and I'll just summarize some of the, the comments for you. I do have questions about the DEC report and I'll get to that later. So I wanted to put into context uh, why this project needs the scrutiny that uh, you know, we've asked for by the planning board. Um, so I'm just going to read quickly from the LWRP which is kind of like the master plan for uh, this district. Uh, it says, in summary, the collection of large estates set in design landscapes, many undisturbed natural features, and significant public historic sites render the estates district unique in the Hudson River coastal area, the state, and the nation. The beauty of the region's landscape, including views of the Hudson and the distant Catskill Mountains, have been celebrated for generations, most notably in the paintings of the Hudson River School, the first indigenous art movement in the United States. The district represents designed landscapes which spawned the American landscape movement that subsequently spread across the country and remain, as does the work of renowned architects, some of whom were ingenious innovators in the architectural history of the nation, such as Stanford White of Astor Court. Their work have earned for a majority of the estates district a national historic district designation. The Tea House property and Astor Court property are cornerstones of the district. There's been a lot of talk about uh, view shed protections and there are two definitions of view sheds that I think are very important to consider. The two types are, one, panoramic views, generally including fields or lawns, the Hudson River and its western shorelines. And two, the intimate views of a pastoral or forested nature. If care were not taken to cluster and orient structures to retain these views, discordant features would be introduced into the views, reducing their scenic quality and impairing the scenic quality of the estates district. Siting of structures in the lawn areas, as in the pool pavilion and barn 01, would alter the composition of the views, reduce open space, and in some cases block views in the estates district, a significant component of the scenic quality. I have a brief statement about the landscape plan. Uh, the current landscape plan, not yet complete, fails to provide adequate four season screening of buildings, new and existing roadways, and the protection of historic view sheds. 
For example, the pool and pool house would be clearly visible from the Astor Courts field and driveway without significant screening. Moreover, the landscape plan requires further study given its lack of clarity as to what landscaping currently exists and what will be added, as well as the nature of the pros plantings and trees, many of which are neither deer resistant nor capable of providing adequate screening. This is not just an adjoining neighbor concern, but a concern of the community as a whole. If there is no protection built into this project for river views, the iconic historic landscape, and that is a very important point, the uh, iconic historic landscape, it's not just the river views or the concentration of density in such a purportedly protected area, this could easily serve as a dangerous precedent for future development of river properties. This board is currently considering the uh, Blackwood proposal on River Road and Rhinecliff, and we're asking how is the level of intrusion proposed by the Duffy application different from that proposal's impacts in the same district? Mm -hmm. For uh, some questions about the damage that were done to the slope, there was significant damage done to the slope along the Hudson and a mitigation plan is being discussed. The habitat protection is recognized as fundamental to assuring the survival of fish and wildlife populations. Certain habitats are critical to the maintenance of a given population and therefore merit special protection. Such habitats, such as Astor Cove, um, <coughs> exhibit one or more of the following characteristics, are essential to the survival of a large portion of particular fish or wildlife population, e.g. feeding grounds and nursery areas, which Aster Cove is, support populations of rare and endangered species, which Aster Cove does, are found at a very low frequency within a coastal region, and support fish and wildlife pi populations having significant commercial or recreational value, and would be difficult or impossible to replace. So Aster Cove is such a habitat, and I'm asking that an independent habitat assessment is essential, and the organization best qualified to render the report is Hudsonia, whom the town has relied on for many years. I have questions, too, about procedures um, in relation to Barn 01. Barn 01 was put up probably almost a year ago. Um, when it was put up, there was no special use permit or planning board site plan approval for the shed barn, which is now referred to as barn 01 in the application. The shed barn also has no certificate of occupancy or certificate of compliance. But these issues predate the application and should be resolved before the current application is considered. Most of the screening, or not most, at least half of the screening, is to screen the barn shed that was put up without these special use permit and site plan approval. When it was first um, proposed, it was proposed as a shed barn, so as a storage shed. So as if it had gone through normal site plan approval, I would guess that it would not be placed in the front of the house because that would have created a variance. It, a shed barn doesn't belong in front of a house and the shed barn probably would have ended up down where the little run-in shed is, which is currently a storage shed. So to consider this now an existing building, I think, is flawed. Uh, and to then have to do extensive landscaping to hide this building, to me, doesn't make any sense. The building didn't belong there in the first place. I also have some questions about the procedures of the lot consolidation. And the application states that the lots are consolidates, consolidated. So I'd, I'd ask the board to please explain how the consolidation is being processed, permitted, and noticed. And do, do any agencies such as uh, Dutchess County Planning or any other agencies need to comment on the consolidation? Um, I have a lot more comments, but I'd like to reserve some time for the rest of people who might want to speak. I'll put all these comments into the record. I'll send them to Joan. So thank, thank you. you. Are they going to be tonight? Yes. Are we getting copies? And we can get copies for you yep. yes. tonight. Brian? Good evening, board, Mr. Chairman, uh, Ryan Dowden, CAB Chair. Um, besides our comments that we put in, uh, the board had some questions about the coastal assessment form. Um, when we looked through the plans, we saw that there was a supplemental coastal assessment form for the new submission. Um, we were just wondering if, per the law, if they should submit a new coastal assessment form uh, because the plans have changed. I 
saw the original one was back in February, I believe it was February 13th, 2014. And it seems that the supplemental one with the documents dated May uh, 2014 is a supplemental coastal form. So I don't know if the board wishes a new one to be submitted or... No. Because it just seems As long a as the information is paste. provided, it doesn't need to have a new form anymore. That we're not asking for a new application yeah, from the applicant. Uh, as we go through the public hearing process, as we go through the review process, changes are made to the application as it's presented. And we do go forward, which is why we've also requested an extra time to schedule a special meeting of this board so the CAB, WAC can use that supplemental information, that additional information, to do its consistency review. Okay, it's just in the supplemental coast review form, it re references certain parts and it seems very, I don't know, scattered. It, it doesn't seem to what the form originally that we have printed out and use. It just seems very cut and paste. If, there's, if there are issues which you don't have information that you feel you need, um, bring that, bring that considered concern to me and I'll see if I can't find that for you. Okay. Thank you, board. Mm -hmm. With reference to the earlier comments that we heard tonight, a couple of things I'd like to say. First of all, the consolidation of the lots is what the subdivision, uh, the subdivision application is for, lot consolidation. Basically what's happening is a lot which had a building on it and infrastructure on it has now been turned into a lawn. It is being attached to the existing property. Um, I find absolutely no environmental issues with that or problems with that whatsoever. Uh, as far as the hillside is concerned, I have gone there a number of times. I have viewed what is going on there. The hillside has not moved. The steps that have been taken to stabilize it have apparently been effective. I see no problem with that. I know other areas along the river have also been cleared by other residents for reasons which I think are justified. And at the same time, those areas also seem to be stable as well. Uh, a number, as far as the habitat study is concerned, uh, we have DEC sign off on that. I see absolutely no reason whatsoever to require any further study of this site. Where the building is going on on this site is the former site of where the, I believe the main house was. There were other infrastructure buildings there. I think John Jacob Astor built the original, I think it was John Jacob or whoever, I think it was 1850, something like that. This site has been disturbed for about what, the last 170 years. It is not a virgin site. It is not a site that anyone has any idea of what the initial habitat was back at that time. It's my opinion that the applicant in this case has given us every bit of information we've asked for. The state said they didn't want archaeology. We did. We've got it. They've even gone to, type, to phase three in terms of recovery of material. They have gone to DEC and asked DEC to come to the site to review both wetland delineations, what was going on in the wetlands, to look at the site where the trees were taken down, and they have no habitat issues with that. Uh, our engineer has signed off on both the uh, SWIP and the sewage disposal uh, plans for this site. Uh, frankly, uh, I certainly come to a certain point where I feel that there's so much you can ask of a private residence. This is not a public, public procedure. This is not a commercial property. This is a private residence. I believe that what the applicant is doing is on this 44 whatever acre property it's going to be, the construction that's taking place is taking place where there has been traditionally structures. The glass uh, guest house is going to be where an existing shed is. The uh, pool pavilion and the pool is basically, I believe, in the area where the mansion was at one time. And the this building that was built, that uh, barn no one, was indeed done without special use permit site plan because the ZEO at the time said it wasn't necessary. A building <coughs> permit was gotten for that and they have spoken with the uh, building inspector. They can always extend the, the term of the building permit. There is no violation on the property. There, there is no reason why the review of this property cannot go forward. And I think there comes to a point where I hope that in the next two weeks any additional issues or discomfort can be addressed and I certainly hope to do that. Uh, any help I can be to do that, I'm more than happy to do between people having some questions. But I do think you come to a point where what you have asked for and it has been granted is indeed sufficient. Um, some of the comments that have been made I do not believe are valid. I do not believe they're justified. I do not believe they're based upon what is actually happening on this site or what the applicant is proposing to do. So having had my say, anything else from the public? Comment, comment from the consultant. Yes, Kathy. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one procedural item. I'm sorry? 
uh, as Kathy is coming up, Michael did not indicate uh, one, did not cover one of the procedural items that was raised. S applications for subdivision plat approval are not referable and reviewable by Dutchess County Planning. Uh, only zoning related actions, such as special permits, site plans, uh, and those matters were referred to County Planning. My name is Kathy Hammer. I live at Astor Courts usually referred to as the neighbor with regard to this project. I think you all will agree that the entity and the place that is most impacted by what is happening on this property is Astor Quartz. Is that a fair remark? Mm -hmm. Thank you. There is much in what is presented this evening, even though Mr. Jacklitz, Jacklitz, right, indicates that it's all, you know, old business. It is not. There are issues in this, which we just saw Tuesday. We've not been a party to almost anything of the dialogue between the town and this applicant. And usually when these things come in, we see them when they're being presented. This this particular set of documents, the documents dated June the 9th and the documents dated June 20th, I saw on Tuesday. Sorry, let me take it back. June 9th, I did see when I came back from Europe. So, you know, we never seem to know until somebody stands up and discusses it or until you have a dialogue with them. I have no idea what was going on about the landscaping, no idea about the lighting and whatever. In spite of the fact that we have expressed concerns, deep concerns, and we continue to express them. So I would like to ask two things. I've outlined stuff in here. I would like a site visit with those people who seem to be, you know, doing the landscape work and indicating how it'll be positioned and the type and so forth because much of what is in there is different or new or additional to what had been discussed the last time I was at the planning board meeting. So I'd like that. I don't care who goes or if anybody will let me on the property, I would like to do that. I'd also like you to read this letter, much of which Jeff Romano has discussed and understand, please, what our basic concerns have been from the beginning. I've had one conversation, to be fair, with Mr. Jaklitz, one, two months ago, two, three months ago, expressing what our true concerns were. I don't believe that those concerns have been addressed in, in ways that at least we can understand, if not be satisfied with. So I would like you in the next limited period of time to please allow us some kind of dialogue to the process that has been going on without our really being a party to it. And this is the letter. Okay, thank you. I think the question of a site visit is really up to the applicant. And I... I think no. that there should be a problem with this that's something we can get done prior to the Okay. Process. I'd be, be happy to participate in that, um, schedule that. You know, we have two weeks. Uh, Do we necessarily have to be as a board involved at all? It's between no. two We don't have to, but I have, I have offered to involve myself. I'm not going to ZEO anymore, so I have some free time. <laughs> so, um, I would be happy to do that. And then... Do I coordinate that with? Um, do you want to do it through me? And I will do it... That makes sense. Okay. I'll get some times and dates that are, that are convenient, and um, we'll set that up. I'm going to this meeting because you're, you're only... <coughs> yeah. You're less than two weeks. Right. Um, yeah, I'm going to be out of town for a few days, and I'm not going to say where. <laughs> but um, other than that, um, uh, definitely, when we conclude this, we'll, we'll, we'll see if we don't have some times and dates so that it's convenient, because we do have everyone here now, so that might be the most convenient way to do it. If we can just sort of maybe, I'll, we'll take a break for a few minutes and just step outside, and sure. if that's convenient. Sure. Okay? And again, we want to... Uh uh, have any dialogue that would move this matter forward, but I just want to 
say for the record that every single application that was filed here was sent to the attorney for ask reports, including the full binders that this board received, every application to the planning board and to the zoning board. And the only application which was not sent to Mr. Cantor was one that was filed after he informed me that he no longer represented um, Astor Courts. Okay. I did not know until I picked up on a voicemail on my way up here tonight the name of the successor council. So I think that this applicant has done everything possible to fully advise the neighbor of everything in its application. Uh, it has dialogue with Mr. Romano, who is a consultant retained by Astor Courts, or has so identified himself and tried in every way to further a dialogue to come to some reasonable solution here. So we are willing to go the next mile and, and to try to resolve things, but I think it should be known that copies of everything we filed with this board were sent in full binders the same day they were filed. Thank you. And may I speak to that? Sure. Um, we did not receive the June 9th package nor did we receive the June 20th, which came in to the town by Federal Express on Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. I got it on Tuesday. Those are the two to which I was referring, number one. Um, number two, let me just say one thing, because I know Mr. Broad and Mr. Trimble raised this with us this afternoon. Why now? in terms of our offering concerns, letters, whatever. Why have we waited until now? One reason is, I believe, Ms. Van Tyle, that this application has shifted in pretty significant ways over the period of time that you guys have been working on it, number one. So it's always been very difficult, including tonight's presentation to sort of get a handle on exactly where it was going to be the next time that they came. So that was one thing. The second thing is she refers to our prior counsel. I think he and I both hoped that we would be able to work together to come to some resolution of the sets of concerns and issues that were problematic for us. That didn't happen. And so tonight would be my first opportunity to at least raise these issues and ask for a voice in the dialogue. That's all I'm asking for. If you and I and Mr. Cantor, I mean, uh, uh, Mr. Eric Charlton can resolve this, it would be great. It would, it, it's exactly what you and I talked about months ago. That's really what we want, is to come to some kind of conclusion that makes sense for everybody in the mix. And that's so what, I, I think we're all we'll give it a shot. The same, exactly. The same exactly. Great. And so to the extent that you can facilitate that, I would agree. I will do that. Did you have your hand up, sir? Would you, would you care to be recognized and speak? I'll be brief. Uh, for the record, my name is Mark Berminski. I'm a consulting engineer and land surveyor, and I was retained by uh, Astor Quartz uh, to review the uh, Duffy application on their behalf. And <clears throat> I, I did uh, review several aspects of it. And one of the major concerns that uh, Astor Quartz had with this particular application related to Viewshed and you know visibility of uh, proposed improvements on the Duffy property from the Astor Quartz property. I have uh, done some preliminary work with regard to uh, developing some sight lines and view sheds, Astor Quartz to the uh, proposed improvements, and <clears throat> I have suggested uh, to uh, Astor Quartz that they meet with the representatives of uh, Mr. Duffy in order to ensure that there's um, you know adequate screen screening to the improvements, you know, a couple structures. Um, in particular, uh, one the uh, uh, building associated with the pool house or with with the pool, and um, that this may be best served with a field meeting and reviewing. You know, some you know nothing like taking a look on the site. I have some preliminary, uh, um, as I said, preliminary um, 
view shed analysis plans that I can provide, um, but I would also like to have the ability to, you know, attend a meeting with, um, you know, a representing Astor Courts to, to review that with, uh, um, uh, you know, the applicant. That's it. Okay. Thank well, you, Mark. Uh, we would welcome uh, Mr. Gominsky on the site visit, mm -hmm. but we would ask that if he's identified uh, preliminary additional sure. projects that should be identified, mm -hmm. we'd like to see them now. In yeah, fact, you could. Uh, in, my, in my continuing dialogue with Mr. Cantor over these many weeks, uh, we were expecting to receive them some time ago. And if you'll recall, the, the, the sight lines and projects that were originally done were done based upon sight lines identified by Astor Cove. I think we were, I'm sorry, by Astor Courts. We were uh, initially cooperating to try to get sight lines to take in a leaf off condition, which we did, and those are the ones that we presented to you. And if there are additional ones, uh, we can't get any leaf off at this time of year. But if there are other uh, points of view, we would like to have them now so that we can study them before the site mm -hmm. I'll certainly provide that information okay. to the board Thank and, you, Mark. and forward it to the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, once I start, you can't shut me up. Um, Ms. Fantel, I want you to know that if you were in dialogue with Mr. Cantor, it was never reported to us. And so I actually thought that there was no back and forth at all. And to... Um, I'm happy to share with you, so we get this out of the way, all of the emails from Mr. Cantor indicating basically that nobody would talk about anything. So I'm going to share those with you because I don't want you guys to think, okay, I'll share it with anybody who wants yeah. to read it. <laughs> okay. I, I understand you're a lawyer. Ethical yeah, 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 I get it. Right. And we're going to... Forget it. New attorney, but uh, I guess... Maybe this is like a, uh, an experience where we, before the board, we're, we're finally getting down to brass tacks. Right, exactly. It's silly, isn't it? It's ridiculous. We'll, we'll have a nice you. meeting and we'll do it on site. Thank and, you. and who's bringing the hot dogs in here? <laughs> we got Triscuits. <laughs> no, it will not be. I won't be here. Um, it's, any other comments from the public? Okay, what I'd like to ask... Yes, sir. Ask for credits, ask for comments from the board. I comments from the board. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just want to tell you, I support your commentary 100% on what was said by you relative to the latest documentation that just came in. Thank you. I want that on a public record. What I would like to ask the board for is a motion to continue this public hearing to July 7th at 6.30. And I would also, if I can roll into that, also ask Art to draft for that meeting, for our consideration should we be in a position to do so, a draft part two and part three for us to review at that time, a, a draft negative declaration if that's appropriate, and a draft consistency resolution for us to consider, and this will be based upon both the meeting that we're going to be having, the discussions we're going to be having, any further information that we have, the CAB providing the consistency review. Um, is that fair, Art? I mean, I have, I have no problem at all with that uh, directive from the board. Uh, the only thing I ask is that uh, I be advised a day or so before the 7th yeah. of any progress that's made uh, in the dialogue that occurs absolutely and receive a copy of the CAB's report yeah we'll hopefully be meeting either later this week or early next week right I, I think that's great and I uh, appreciate Mark Reminsky's cooperation also I think mm -hmm. we'll fully share information after all we're all taking a hard look mm -hmm. uh, at the issues and uh, I think it's in everyone's interest to have as much conversation and, and meaningful dialogue as possible uh, to try to reach a satisfactory solution, but if it comes to the point of documents needing to be prepared, I agree that our board needs to have yeah. the, the, the latest information. And I would say, on behalf of the applicant, we would like to have. Can't yeah, have it later than the right. It's got to be right. No later than yeah. How? Okay. Very good. Tuesday. 
Could I hear a motion to that effect? Of so moved. Second? Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Right. Um, There's much time, is there? I was going to say, yeah, you I really have, to say, to have things by the close of business on the second. Uh, yes, because, yeah. because I'm going to be away from the from midday on the third through the evening of the sixth. That's it. So maybe we should do this for the seven and seven is 14. Is, that, is it possible for the board? Members? No, we, we don't meet again until the 21st. We meet on the seventh. The special meeting think, instead of the seventh, if you put on the 14th, we at least have that's, that's, that's yeah. Yeah, I just don't think we have enough time to. Yeah, do that, that would take the. Yeah. yeah. Is the fourteenth work for everybody? Works for that me. would make that, that would that would make. That be good. Want to go to town board meeting? Town board meeting. Well, okay. Can we kick them downstairs? <laughs> no. It does, it does not have to be on. It does not have to be on a Monday. What about? Why can't we go downstairs? We could go downstairs. Uh, you get accessible. Will this be the only thing on the agenda? I would imagine. Correct. It'll be this and maybe one other <coughs> uh, preliminary application. Okay. Um, that I know of. That's all I know of. Um, I think we could use downstairs. We could do downstairs. And if we have to come up, then the town board will have to go down because otherwise <coughs> we'll be in trouble with ADA. <laughs> uh, so could I hear a motion? Well, could I be, Okay, wait a minute. We already approved the first motion so that we're going to amend. amend. And that Art's going to write documents. Yeah. Okay, now. Could I hear a motion to change the special meeting from July 7th at 6.30 to July 14th at 6.30 and to schedule the continuation of this public hearing at 6.35 on July 14th? Wait, he's thinking. Hmm? Uh -oh. Do you have a problem? Uh, I've, got to, I've got to play around with something else, but uh, it, 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 that'll, that'll work. That'll More work. fun than this? Uh, another business item. Uh, so oh. moved. Second? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, very good. Going to meet on the 14th at 6:35. Um, is it okay for me to take a, like a brief recess, and we'll just set oh, up? What you've got to do now? You, you just you just changed the date of the special meeting. You haven't changed the date of continuation of the public hearing. Oh, I thought I did. I thought I rolled it all into one. You rolled it all into one. Okay. So I'm I have no clue. Okay. The 14th is a problem. It gets harder for us. It gets harder for us when we start yeah. switching huh? days of the week. Is it, is, is it, is it tough? Yeah. I figure this yeah. way, we're, everyone's pretty much I was originally going to suggest, suggest like, the t like Thursday the 10th or something like that instead of the, uh, the 7th. Yeah. Well, since we have everyone here... Um, Let's take a five-minute break and schedule. We'll take a five-minute break and we'll schedule the site visit with who's going to join us. Okay. And okay. Is it seven, eight, 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 eight. It's the 14th at 6.35, yes. So I can hit done on my calendar. Yes. Okay. Until oh. I change my mind again. <laughs> so with that, if you could try to encourage the CAD comments by... The 7th. By the 7th. Right. By the 7th? Yep. Or 7th or, or the 9th. Right. Not, yeah. Certainly not later than Wednesday the 9th. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, being a portion of a substantially greater acreage controlled by the applicant being a type one action under seeker due to location with the Hudson River National Historic Landmark District. Yes. You guys have any further hearing. questions? <laughs> okay. You have to inform the public of what you're doing uh, and, and, you're, and you're public on I, TV. We are... Um, going to reuse uh, two of the buildings that are on the former Holy Cross campus, add a connecting structure that will turn them into a stall barn and indoor riding arena. Um, the area of disturbance for that site is limited to places where buildings had been in the past. Um, and uh, that's basically what's being proposed. It's a it's, there's some, some construction and then the reuse of two existing buildings. Okay. We had some questions. We were going over the plans. We had some questions. We hope, and we have the plans here so you, for you to refer to. And I'm going to basically let Melody and Art raise those questions. Art, perhaps, because I was not paying attention. To, do, and, you want, um, do you want our um, site plan report? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. Your site plan report first. Okay. <laughs> site plan report first. Yes. Start. Oh, okay. Um, uh, Melody and I went down. Um, it's two big old, two big buildings. Probably what, early 50s? Um, yeah, mid 50s. The other, the, 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 the field house is from the late 80s. 
uh, and then the connecting uh, connecting building between it. Um, the one question that I, I do have after after I left was, um, and I did see it was addressed too in the CAB minutes was the stall barn is there, the riding arena is there, but where is there a spot for the horses to go outside? The turnout would be in fields and areas adjacent to the site. Um, I'd be happy to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, can you indicate where those would be on the site plan? Um, yeah, I didn't realize that that would be part of what you were reviewing because of the agricultural nature of those fields. Yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty thorough. Yeah, um, there's a road that used to continue to down past those existing buildings and go over a bridge, mm -hmm. over the pond. To the north side of that road is a large area of uh, relatively flat uh, ground that uh, had been open in the past. Mm -hmm and we will uh, reopen and use for, for, for turnout. There's um, the area immediately behind the uh, field house or what will be the indoor will be a reserve paddock area that will probably remain sand so that we have a place uh, for animals during inclement weather. Uh, and the, the area in front of to the west of that building uh, behind the, the addition will also be a small paddock area. There was another question about parking. Is it given, we weren't sure how many stalls there were, so how many potential borders you might have, say you're, you know, yeah. totally booked up. The, um, there's a lot of different ways the stalls could be used. Um, there's a, there are, so depending on whether we <coughs> lease uh, a portion or all of the barn to a single trainer, and that person is arriving and training most of the horses during mm -hmm. the week and their clients would come and ride once a week. The parking for that kind of situation is very limited. Mm -hmm. um, so we propose to do a small parking area across that road that I just mentioned on the incoming driveway that's existing uh, a state road. Okay. Well, could that could also be added to the site plan just so we see where it is. Uh, sure. This yeah. There's a there's also a courtyard area that's created between the two buildings. Right. That's supposed to be eventually paved. It that's says. the area. The only thing that's on the plan we have here, right. which is largely the yeah. Is that septic or what is Art speak? Yeah. There there are two. Yeah. The there's a little site plan that's included in the uh, engineers' uh, drawings that principally deal with the with the uh, SDS. Right. So uh, I guess you know the you you indicated that the uh, the project consists of the two existing buildings and the connecting link. Well, the project really consists of the two existing buildings, the uh, link, and of course the the SDS uh, installation, which uh, right. is a shared uh, a matter of shared uh, shared review by the planning board under site plan and the health department, of course, uh, and. Um, uh, there are pavement areas identified also on that site plan uh, that I, I would assume are a portion of this project because they are no more future than the connecting link, which is also described on this as future building. That's part of the, so I would guess those paved areas that show on the site plan are part of the project uh, initially. Yeah, I'm not sure that we would pave them with blacktop. They are going to so be. Then the, then the plan is mis misleading. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't think yeah. it's our plan to do that with black yeah. yeah. We just. Is it going to be gravel? Is it going to be? We just. We need have to know. on the site um, tailings from having removed. I don't know, 15, 20, maybe thirty thousand square foot of parking that was mm -hmm. paved and ex mm -hmm. existing on the site, um, and we've been using that on roads. It works okay. very well. So yeah. that's probably what our material will be, mm -hmm. that or some kind of item four. Oh, yeah. right. So on the side, you're going to show where the parking areas you're proposing to do and, and, and the material you're proposing or you're to use would be these, this material, the salvage material and actually, within the surface. The parking area is different than the pavement areas that are shown on this plan. Okay. Pavement areas are shown on this plan, I guess, are essentially the courtyard area and some circulation around the building. And yeah, parking areas. I think that's a that's that is a mistake that the engineer made to show it as pavement. Okay. Um, I think that they indicated that because they were trying to figure out where to put their uh, 
retention tank mm -hmm. and they, they marked it as pavement areas so oh. that they knew they couldn't put something yeah. under that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not our intention to pave, so I'm sorry that that's, okay. that's okay. confusing. And, um, the, and the parking area is apart from that. Is that it's different? across the road. That I across mentioned. the road, so that should be somehow identified. If you could just show where the paddocks are going to be and where the, where the parking is going to be and just the material, that would be very helpful. Um, okay, I'd be happy to show a basic outline of paddocks. That plan, I, I mean, I, I'll be as cooperative as I can, but I also don't want to be asked to do things that are not within mm -hmm. um, the purvey of a site plan. I, if, if we're putting in paddocks on an ongoing basis, I don't think I need site plan approval no. for each of those. No. But we just want to know where the horses are going to go when they leave the building. That's all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's plenty of land that's already open for horse turnout. Okay. Yeah. Other comments from the site visit? Well, um, not exactly from the uh, We did ask for you when we were there to indicate somewhere how the upper floor of the first building that you encounter will be used. We talked about it. You weren't sure if it was going to be equipment or hay. You said you would put a note on something. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't do that. I, in thinking about that, does it matter as long as it's within the agricultural uh, use, whether that's indicated or not? Well, structurally, I guess at one point it was possible equipment, maybe machinery might be up there. Uh, just from a structural standpoint, it would be good to know. Just because when I stamp and sign, I'm basically signing off that whatever is going here is going to be safe, is going to be okay. Yeah, so I'd like to just have an idea of it, what's going to go there. Yeah, the, the, the building is built and rated for assembly. So anything that we put in there in terms of a square foot value for that mm -hmm. floor, it's so far above <laughs> what um, any agricultural structure would be. I mean, there's, it's, it's built to, to have an entire school of children standing and adults filling the, the space. That is substantially lighter than an equipment loading. If, well, that is a, a substantially lighter, uh, a, a, a human occupancy is substantially lighter than an equipment or a hay loading would be. My understanding is that assembly loading on a per square foot basis is one of the highest loadings you could do. I'd like to see that documentation from your engineer. Okay. Um, at any rate, um, we did talk with, uh, with Robert Murray about any of those potential uses and he didn't see a problem with them. If you'd like for me to yeah, if you could, just yeah. just so that I know when I do sign off on this, yeah. if there's a problem, they yell at Robert. Michael, if the um, if the planning board were not requiring it, the building department needs to. Because Absolutely. in issuing his building permit, the building department is accepting a liability with respect to the safety right. of that particular building. I understand that we would have to and present. And particularly in that we're talking about a loading that could be under, uh, above uh, a space that's occasionally or uh, occupied by, by humans. Yeah, I, I understand. I, I thought that we would have to present that at the time when we were get, applying for the building permit to for the certificate. I think it's, you know, it's legitimate questions being asked though, by, the, by the board. On the, um, I understand. Yeah. The, when I'm looking at the floor finish plan, I think I'm understanding it, but... Um, for, I for which building are you looking? Actually, it's for both of them. Okay. And um, I'm having trouble relating that to which are wash stalls, which are stalls, which are um, aisles. Can you help me understand that? <clears throat> because I don't see anything in our packet here that says what are stalls, what are where your wash stalls are. Um, these are wash racks. This is uh, this is all aisle area here. Uh huh. Um, these so are stalls. only these four are the only wash stalls. These are the wash racks here. Okay. Um, there is uh, a farrier stall. Can we get this with that information on it? Which which are farrier stalls? Which are wash stalls? Do, does why? I, I mean, I'm happy to give it to you, but I, I don't understand what it is. How it just it helps me understand how it works. What's your concern? I don't know. <laughs> My concern is that I don't really understand how it functions, I guess. This is an aisle that okay. runs through the whole barn. 
These are the wash racks. This is also an aisle so that there's a means but, uh, of egress I, here. Is there a problem with just putting that in writing on this? No. Okay, good. That's all I'm asking for. And, and, no, and at the same point in time, numbering the stalls. I think I think we agreed it was 24, but I'm not really sure if that's the that's the case. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Other questions from the board? Um, I I just want to note that even though it is an ag district and it's an ag um, use, yeah, ag use, it still has to follow our zoning law. It still has to be the you know ag and market mm -hmm. says. Yes, you can do ag, but it still has to follow the local mm -hmm. zoning law. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, do you that feel that it's work. not? Uh, no, I just wanted to make that point because, like, we look at this plan and it. I mean, I couldn't figure. I couldn't even tell where on the property the buildings were. Looking at this plan. Well, the they're located on the engineering draw engineer's drawing of the of the site. Are they not? There's a. Uh, Yes. Yeah. Yes. There is there is there is a key plan right here that uh, lot boundary plan. But we didn't. Uh, but, we but, never but, got but, that. We didn't get that. We've not. It's not labeled not. site plan. It's labeled the actually the uh, the health yeah, department and, and we didn't. Plan. We never got that. Oh, I submitted. I submitted. I think I was asked to submit three copies to the, the board. Yeah. That may well be. And they. I did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm I'm happy to be as helpful as I need to be. I, I I'm I'm wary of being asked to do things that that. Um, I don't have to. We're, we're not going to ask you to do that. Okay, good. Thank you. We only ask what you have to do. Good. Other questions? Brian. Good evening again, board. Ryan Dowden, Conservation Advisory Board. Uh, I was also present along with Gary Kenton, with Melody Moore, and Sharon Sherrod at that site visit uh, June 12th at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we just have some main uh, concerns. It's um, nothing too uh, specific. We, we're sort of concerned. We, we know the arena has its own drainage system, but our concerns deal with the stable and the building connecting the stable and arena. And just thinking of um, soils, ag soils, things like that, and, and best practices, um, we were, our, our advisement would be to see if the applicant would be interested in um, potential rain gardens or rain barrels, something to capture the rain coming off the roofs, which are significantly high. The buildings are, are, are quite high off the ground, and, and we felt that uh, potentially some of that water could, could be captured instead of it just coming off the roof and washing down to the low, lower areas of the property. And if the uh, rain gardens, rain barrels, or any other methods to uh, capture the uh, runoff. And um, the paperwork from Dutchess County Health Department concerning the SDS, um, has that been submitted yet? Have they gotten back to the town on that? I have not received the final approval when they did a site visit, and I assume it's in their works. Mm -hmm. and no, they indicated they had no further concerns or questions about it. So I do know that the engineer at the start of the SDS, I believe town, for several weeks because of the death of the family, so there may be some delay in her actually getting that response to us. Um, but I. I assume it's pending. Mm -hmm. sure. The application, and certainly uh, uh, the application has in fact been submitted to the health department. It's pending at the health department, and uh, copies of the, uh, well, copies of the submission made to the health department have been presented to the planning board, uh, one of which is right here. Um, with regards to the, uh, to the, the, the roofs, the buildings in the past were guttered the intent to re them. And there's a system in place for the existing buildings to collect and dispose of that uh, water in a, sort of a, a big system drainage area um, so that it's not dispersing on the surface. We just haven't tied into that. We didn't want to put the garbage back in until we had completed the construction of the addition. Sure, okay. So uh, that is part of the, the construction plan for those buildings. All right. Just we, we, we didn't have anything on the plan, so 
we uh, we just wanted to make sure you know not too much runoff was heading anywhere. Um, in the EAF part or one, it was um, checked off that liquid waste would be generated, but it wasn't explained the nature of the liquid waste. I, I don't know. That because there is going to be a, a sewage, uh, you know, a uh, septic system okay. somewhere along the way. Okay, so, so it's going to be san sanitary wastewater. Okay. Yeah, sanitary waste. All right. Um, and also in the coastal assessment form, it was filled out that uh, stormwater runoff into coastal waters. There will be best management practice uh, to control stormwater runoff into coastal waters. Uh, just for uh, for the members, we wanted to know if that would require a swap a stormwater per, uh, pollution prevention plan. I don't believe it doesn't. I think that what Michael has just said that there is a system in place that's going to be employed once the construction is completed and the actual stormwater off of the roofs and all is going to be collected and disposed of through a cistern system. And the extent of disturbance is not such that it requires an SP, SWPPP be prepared, as I understand the case. Can we clear um, or plant, uh, if, if we clear an area that is larger than the home now is one acre, it used to be five acres, um, if there's enough stumping in that area that we uh, we reach that threshold, we have always um, open the slip for that action. We have several that are open on the farm right now for those that are So that's been our practice to do that and to follow the recommendations for, uh, we, we self-manage because it's mm -hmm. agriculture, but we do open those, those documents and pay to keep them open. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. Um, so that is something that we, that we can take care of when they are reaching that threshold of disturbance for creating the field. And that's required that we can do it. That is good. Yes. Anything else? Answer and just one last, um, just this is probably very minor. Um, with um, manure management, will um, you will have like uh, on some places they take it out via wheelbarrow and sort of pile it uh, on some area from the barn, or will it just go right into the spreader? Um, there's a actually uh, an area on. <coughs> very end of the addition, what we call the um, puppy pull chair, uh -huh. where okay. the, the covered area will be pulled the, um, the spreader in, so it can be moved directly from the barns and not be rained on, and we will either spread directly on the field, or there is on the site a, um, a large old handball field, uh -huh. which is a perfect area to um, that is all from the members from the CAB, from thank the board. You. We thank you, and it was an excellent site visit. And we thank the cooperation of Mr. DeCola and Gumar Hollow LLC. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Ryan. Other members of the public? Uh, good evening. My name is Robert Donaldson. I'm a resident of Mill Road. Um, I'm also a member of the Conservation Advisory Board, and I informed Chairman Dowd in the previous week that I've recused myself from this um, application process regarding the Dakota Kibble property. Um, last Thursday and last month, this most recent Monday, I came to the office here and I reviewed the applicant's folder, and I came across the following. Now, in the Waterfront Consistency Review, paragraph three, paragraph B, subsection three, asking for the location of act action, the applicant wrote Ellerslie Road, Morton Road, private. It does not provide a clear indication as to where the entry or egress would be on the property. In the full environmental assessment form, part one, project and setting, information provided by the applicant for the project location stated that it was on Ellerslie Drive, Rhinebeck, New York. Now at the town call here, I asked the clerk, you know, to show me on the map where's Ellerslie Road or Ellerslie Drive. You know, pretty much knowing that they're private roads and nowhere on the maps in the town here are any of those roads located. Now, based on my understanding of the property, all right, coming from the Rhinecliffe area all the way up to the old Morton Road schoolhouse, there are numerous entrances along Morton Road. There are also two entrances. <coughs> Um, on Mill Road, one of them which is denoted by a private 
uh, blue sign saying Eastgate Drive. My question is, um, where's Ellerslie Drive? On the Dutchess County land parcel site, it does show an Ellerslie Road on the property, but there is no Ellerslie Drive. Now years ago when I worked at Holy Cross as a teacher, I did a lot of historical and archaeological work on the property, and I spoke to many of the old timers, the locals, and they always referred to what is now known as the Eastgate Drive as the, well, is it Ellerslie Drive, the Eastgate Drive at Ellerslie. You know, they went back and forth on it. So my question is, right, that I would like some information, where's this Ellerslie Drive? Now, there are other questions that I would like uh, the applicant to provide him. He probably did not know that this information was needed for tonight's meeting, and um, I understand that, and hopefully at the next public um, session on this property that it would be provided. I could respond to it. Since it was not mentioned, I'd like to know where the main entrance and egress will be located on the property for the stable project. Will it be located on Morton Road or on Mill Road? If there will be more than one entry and egress, I'd like to know where they will be located on the property. I'd like to know where the entrance and egress will be for any commercial deliveries for this stable activity program. Now, if any large or special events will take place on the property, I'd like to know at what sites on the property will the visitors, participants use as an entry and egress. I'd like to know how in any manner will any current or future entrances along Mill Road be used for any special events or activities with this project and program. I'd like to know where on the property any parking sections will be located for cars, trucks, and the wagons that will haul the horses to the site. Since there was no map indicating any entrances, egress, or parking areas in the folder, all right, I would like the applicants to submit a detailed map outlining any of the entrances, egresses, and parking areas on the property that will be used for any and all of the future programs and activities at this site. Thank you. All right, I think that we've asked Michael to show where the parking is going to be on the map. I think he can probably tell us where Ellerslie Road Drive... It was a mistake on my part. Um, the road is Ellerslie Road. It's a 911 road. It's yep. listed as a quiet road. It's in the Dutchess County database. It goes from the entrance to Holy Cross, follows the old road out past the, um, uh, the ball field and comes out at what's now a wooden gate on Morton Road. It's an established road. Um, we changed the name when we bought it from Holy Cross Way mm -hmm. to Hours and Drive. It's on all the site plans for the existing uh, circulation for the, um, for the uh, when the school is open. And that's the point of ingress and egress to this complex. And that's, I assume, where commercial vehicles that's would be right. coming if they're to supply anything, yeah, you know, feed whatever. The only access, right? The, on, the only access intended. Yeah, right now there's no. Yeah. Um, Eastgate Drive uh, it, it ends at the abutment to an old bridge. There's no way to get across mm -hmm. the lake. And we have no intention of rebuilding that bridge to any degree to which we carry traffic like this. So the main entrance will be the road we came in when we met with you? Um, it'll be that, well, that road comes in, circles down around, and goes back out uh, to, there's a wooden gate on Morton Road that you can drive by and see. Um, and it goes by what was the old football field for the Cardinals. So it's going to loop around? Yep. And it's on the, it's on the um, in fact, it's on the the, uh, the file map for the, the, the Holy Cross property at the county at the, the county. Uh, and for the purpose of this hearing, any, any events, any things like that, basically are not what's been proposed. It's basically a, a stable, either for boarding or for training, something like that, um, as I understand it. So overflow parking, things like that, are not... Um, I, you know, I, I, it's not what's being proposed now. I don't know that it's precluded by doing this or not. I, it's certainly not, I'm not planning on running this. <laughs> Um, the stalls, you know, there's 24 horses there. Um, the size of any event would be significantly limited by the... 
Unless, and we, we did ask if you were anticipating in the future any horse shows that would bring in other horses or bring in uh, observers, and we didn't, you know, you didn't, ha you didn't know at this point was what you said. If we're applying for commercial equine agricultural use. Um, mm -hmm. Certainly, that could be a possible use in the future. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that's it's not an intention to actually do anything. No, I know, but it just it relates to the number of parking spaces available, obviously. Yeah, um, you know, there's. I think uh, in my little bit of understanding about what's required in those situations, you're not supposed to have to show parking for the entire horse show. Um, if you do it any farm that has horse shows. There's uh, arrangements that we made with um, a crucial basis for parking. The parking that we will show will be for um, the people who have stalls and horses in the barn with all their things, uh, which is only over now. And we calculated how we made spaces. With one handicapped for ADA? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, you gotta have one. Yeah. ADA yeah. yeah. That's what. That's all you have to do is put up a sign in front of one. That's it. There is therapeutic right. Yeah. Therap yeah. Therapeutic right. Things like that. You never know what you might end up doing there. Um, other questions from the public. Additional questions from the board. Um, and Art's looking up. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, you used the term, Michael commercial equestrian operation. Oh, well, is that a term that you've taken from Ag and Markets yes. law or something of that sort? And um, and I think the board, yeah, I th so I'm, so I'm going to say to the board, I think the board needs to take a look at that definition uh, to see exactly what that encompasses in terms of this discussion of shows or, or whatever. Uh, and that the proposal, in the, in the, the proposal here is uh, on its surface, it's to uh, use the existing buildings, provide a connecting link uh, for purposes of stabling and indoor arena. But then it goes on to say for commercial, in, in the intent here is commercial uh, operations. So in fact, in approving the plan for, uh, the plan as, as, as requested, in the, under the terms requested, you would be encompassing whatever the commercial operation is uh, under Ag and Markets law. Ag and Markets just says I use that term because Ag and Markets recently, I think it was in 2001 or 2002, determined that commercial um, force operations uh, are protected under right to farm law. Mm -hmm. um, there was some question yes. mm -hmm. on that about whether or not that was agricultural activity. Exactly. I'm not using it as a term to define any kind of level of use or impact. I'm just simply saying that. What I'm proposing is protecting the right to farm because it is a commercial operation and we intend to board and uh, keep horses. Um, it doesn't give us any more power than the right to farm law does and it is simply uh, a way of, of saying that we are in a farm district and proposing to do agricultural activity. My thought, my thought on the subject uh, for, the, for the planning board um, is, is that it might be better uh, if the planning board moves us to a decision uh, to deal with the creation of the stall barn and riding arena for whatever the use is specifically identified as in the zoning law as opposed to ag and markets law. And that use, I think, is, uh, is in a public stable or something of that sort. Uh, public stable riding academy? Yeah, yeah. Um, which is... <coughs> Defined use number seven. Yeah, public. Let me just see what it says. It may, not, it may not be defined, but at least it's uh, a specific use that's identified in the uh, in the use schedule. In the I think we determined that the um, uh, that because it's in a farm district, that the yeah, agricultural markets law supersedes that. The Ag and Markets Law simply indicates that municipalities cannot enact zoning 
that is detrimental to farm activities. And if there's any dispute, it's a matter that has to be taken up with the Commissioner of Agriculture. Sharon is absolutely correct. Ag, and far, ag, mar, ag operations are subject to local zoning requirements. And uh, here we should be dealing with a use that's mentioned in the zoning law. I'm a, a, particularly, particularly in that, uh, you know, at this point in time, there's doesn't seem to be any specific plan uh, for an expanded operation that might be somehow uh, construed to be authorized under the Ag and Markets Law under as a commercial equestrian operation, be it horse shows or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Uh, which you know, which 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 would have which would have other impacts that would have to be uh, I, I, considered. I, I, I don't think that commercial riding stable and uh, has any specific um, in in zoning has any specific declarations about horse shows and not horse shows. I'm not I'm not trying to. Uh, uh, horse shows would be an event, and events have to be specifically authorized under the zoning law. Uh, the zoning law is clear that if a use is not specifically identified, it's a prohibited use under the zoning law. Perhaps so I what is what is allowed under the zoning law we'll is a know. public stable or a riding academy. Just okay. keep touching it so it doesn't keep okay. fit. Okay. The conduct okay. of a fair, the conduct of a horse show is, or whatever is not specifically authorized. Okay. And therefore is prohibited. Okay, what we have here, um, uh, commercial horse boarding operations already have access to dis agricultural district protections and agriculture assessment relief if they consist of at least seven acres, uh, board ten horses and gross ten thousand yeah. dollars above. Um, let me see. Okay, they must also receive ten thousand dollars in gross receipts annually from fees generated through the provision of commercial equine activities, including but not limited to riding lessons, trail riding activities, or training of horses, or through the production of sale of crops, livestock, livestock products. So those are the things that are mentioned that's under. What's allowed. Yeah, that's what's allowed that's, under. That's that's commercial. the use under the zoning law. Commercial, and that basically does jive with what we have for commercial so boarding and stable and training facility. What you're saying is that horse shows would fall in the events law for the town, which... Right. Uh, is that the law you're speaking of? Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying it's such things as the conduct that's of a conduct that's of that's the the village, village, I think. Such, right. such activities as the yeah. conduct of a right. horse show is not a uh, use that's... Uh, mentioned in the zoning law, not authorized in the zoning law, and therefore it's a prohibited activity. Now, if one feels that that prohibition under the zoning law is in conflict with the requirements of Ag and Markets Law, it's a matter to be taken up uh, by the Commissioner of Agriculture who might make a ruling that in some fashion the town zoning law is inconsistent with ag and markets. We're not there. Yeah, I know you're not there because, you, because you're, not, you're not headed there now. Right. You know, it's it, it, it's a you know it's not an activity you contemplate. Well, uh, it's an activity that is a possibility with a stall barn and a horse and indoor riding arena. And the question of what the threshold yeah. is and what constitutes a uh, an event that would require yeah. anything that you're talking about is would be an ongoing discussion at that time. That's right. I, I, yeah. It, that's not what's being proposed here right now. At this I point, know, I don't know what. Yeah. At, at this point, the, what, it, what is being proposed is what I just read on as the commercial ed point, as, and also that also fits the definition of our zoning law. Yeah. So that's that's what we would stick to understanding that if it's to go beyond that to events or something like that, then we would we would have another discussion to see exactly where we go with that. Yeah. Just so for the record, so we understand that, that that's what we're approving, so that there's no misunderstanding. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments from the public? From the members of the board or questions? Well, I have two resolutions. <coughs> um, the, yes? You prepared to move in that direction? I think we are. I, uh, I don't see any. Uh, let, me just, uh, let me just take a look based on what I just said about. Uh, um, We want to. We want to. We want to change the word. It, uh, we want to strike the. Uh, there's a reference in here, again, because I picked up from the application, the commercial equestrian ap uh, operation. We want to strike that particular uh, language and insert the term that's used in the zoning law. Okay, and that term is slash riding academy. Public stable slash riding academy, as defined. as writing canopy as set forth he's gonna have to read this one in the district schedule of use regulations
and defined within the town zoning within within town code chapter 125 okay are we looking good yeah if you uh, insert that that uh, that phrase or those phrases in both resolutions i think you're uh okay you've got to uh further insert and i believe we may have done this at the last meeting uh indication of who prepared the plans uh dating the plans etc and that's in the second resolution okay okay well <clears throat> see what you think <clears throat> about this Town of Randwick Planning Board hereby acts as follows on a proposed action involving the May 2014, and we'll get the date on that, application to the Planning Board for site plan review and approval by Goomer Hollow LLC, Jamie Keibel, and Michael DeCola under Town Code Chapter 125, zoning, in the matter of the proposed renovation and reuse of two existing buildings and the erection of a connecting structure and related site improvements, including SDS, to create stall barn and riding arena for a public stable. Public stable. Uh, slash riding academy as set forth in the district schedule of regulations and defined within town code chapter 125 with a 112 acre tax map parcel on morton road at ellersley drive being a portion uh, and i think we've just corrected that to ellersley road is it ellersley road yes. uh, ellersley road being a portion of a substantially greater acreage controlled by the applicant said proposed action being a type one action under seeker involving a proposed use falling within the definition of agriculture as set forth in the New York State Agriculture Markets Law. One, in its role as lead agency under seeker, determines upon review of the AF Part 1 and its own completion of the annexed AF Part 2, in consideration of the criteria for determining significance set forth in Title 6, Part 617.7c, NYCRR, the historic preservation policies underlying the historic district designation and the pertinent coastal policies set forth in the town's LWRP, that the proposed action as described in the application will cause no potential significant adverse impact on the environment, and thus uses the negative declaration, determination of non-significance, deeming an environmental impact statement to not be required and stating such will not be prepared. Two, authorizes the chairman to so execute the full EAF and directs the planning board clerk to distribute and file the full EAF with negative declaration, annotation, and other documentation as pertinent to a type one action in the manner set forth within the seeker implementing regulations, Title VI, Part 617.12 NYCRR, and in accordance with the format of the updated and recently issued seeker form. Three, further severally determines as otherwise incorporated in the above negative declaration and with due consideration of comments offered by the town's waterfront advisory committee, the proposed work and intended occupancy to be consistent with pertinent coastal policy set forth in the town's LWRP. Could I hear a motion to approve? Hello. Could I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? I'll poll the board. Jesse? Aye. Woody? Aye. Bob? Aye. Sharon? Aye. Melody? Aye. And I vote aye. Moving right along. Um, I have notes here that you want me to number the stalls, show the storage area from the old gym, and show the parking for the uh, Users of the pro of the of the, the facility, I think that summed it up. Else yeah. That well, Sorry that's that I didn't get to that story. yeah. We haven't gotten to the approval resolution yet. Site plan. What? A site plan. Well, that, that it's going to be an enhanced site plan showing mm -hmm. those features and, and that additional data, so that I can stamp and sign it with confidence. Mm -hmm. Did I? Oh, I did. Okay. Uh, the Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board hereby acts as follows on the May 2014 application for site plan review and approval by Goomer Hollow LLC, Jamie Keibel, and Michael DeCola under Town Code Chapter 125 zoning in the matter of the proposed renovation and reuse of two existing buildings and the erection of a connecting structure and related site improvements, including SDS to create stall barn and riding arena for a commercial, no, for a for a public stable slash riding academy as set forth in the district schedule of regulations and defined within town code chapter 125. With an 112 acre parcel on Morton Road or Ellersley Road being a proposed action subject of a negative declaration determination of non-significance under seeker with incorporated statement of consistency with the town's LWRP therefore issued by the planning board. Approves the application for site plan approval uh, site plan review and approval, including but not limited to a set of project plans B1 through B16 and A1 through A8, prepared by and dated. We need to just get the name of the preparer and the who's who's the preparer? Or who's this, who's the stamper of the drawings? Um, drawings that are stamped are being stamped by Robert Murray. Robert Murray. Okay. Yeah. And Steve Mesh prepared the architecture. Uh, Robert Murray for purposes for your purposes. Yeah. Robert Murray, P.E. Okay, and what date we'll worry about. We'll get that. 
uh, including A2 site plan and an engineering report and accompanying plans entitled Goomer Hollow Horse Stable Subsurface Sewage Disposal System, prepared by Erdman Anthony and revised to May 13th, 2014, and authorizes the chairman to stamp and sign the site plan upon the applicant's satisfaction used to the below conditions and or requirements in the next six calendar months. One, documentation of design approval by the Dutchess County Health Department for proposed on-site sanitary sewage facilities. Two, submission of site plan drawings in the number and form required within town code chapter 125 zoning. Stop. Including modifications, including thereon modifications discussed during the public hearing, which is the, what Michael. Right. Zoning, or in lesser number as may be deemed acceptable by the chairman upon consultation with the planning board clerk and the ZEL. Oh, left to myself again. Three, payment of any outstanding fees or reimbursable amounts due to the town of Rhinebeck with respect to the submission, review, and processing of this application under town code chapter 101, subdivision of land. Wait a minute. That's 125, right? 125. Right, zoning. 125 zoning. In taking this action, the planning board determines the above cited documents to have been adequate for its review and consideration of this application and waives any further data requirements set forth within Town Code Chapter 125 zoning, which might otherwise be construed to alter this matter. Could I hear a motion? What? Apply to this matter. Oh, apply to this matter. Huh. I should put these back on. Uh, could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Pull the board. Bob. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Melody. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Woody. Aye. And I'll vote aye. That wasn't so painful. I have a question for the applicant. Yes. How did you get the name Goomer Hollow? <laughs> I asked him last month. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I looked at it as Goomer. I asked you last month. Did you ask me to? Oh, about how many years ago? Yeah. Ten? <laughs> Her face is red, so I think we are going to do another place. Uh, who motioned the seeker resolution? Seeker resolution. Melody. And Sharon, did you? Woody, Woody, Woody. No, that was, that was the approval resolution. I think he did both. He did both? Yeah. yeah, both times. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Joan. Oh, I didn't see you over there, Joan. I was looking for you in the back. <laughs> and here over the fan. Okay. Moving right along. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Michael. Yes. LWRP, 30 days from the 2nd of June. Well, we already approved it. <laughs> I assumed that your discussion up here... I thought we already had a report. Yeah. We didn't? Next. I think he asked all the questions. Yeah. Uh, expedited procedure required yeah. under the zoning law. Yeah. <laughs> were there any questions that you had that were not responded to tonight? After you gave your discussion. Okay. Very good. Thank you. I'm not worried about that. No. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right, our final public hearing. Eric Wallach, 293 Wurttemberg Road, special use permit and subdivision plat contact. Actually, it's just subdivision, isn't it? Oh, there it is. Our? Uh, nothing. What? Nothing, nothing. No, no, no. Oh, it's different. No, it's just, isn't it just subdivision or is it? Special use permit for a conventional subdivision, yes. Oh, right. Yeah, special for use permit and subdivision. But how could you cluster it? It's just... <laughs> well, never that's, mind. What the, that's what the resolution says you're that right. you'll eventually get to. You're right. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. Uh, special use permit and subdivision plat conduct to combine public hearing and application for special use permit conventional subdivision under Town Code Chapter 125 zoning and application for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101 subdivision of land in the matter of the proposed creation of two single-family residential building lots with access via common driveway improvement from the entirety of a 57.08 acre parcel in the rural countryside RC5 district being an unlisted action under Seeker. Mark. Okay. Uh, Mark Rubinsky representing uh, Eric Wallach. Uh, as mentioned in the uh, notice, this is an application uh, for a subdivision and a uh, special permit because it's a uh, proposed conventional subdivision for approximately 57 acres of land. 
uh, access would be off Wurtenberg Road. Uh, there's currently a driveway uh, located on the east side of Wurtenberg Road that will serve uh, as the uh, as the access for the common drive. Common drive will uh, improve that uh, access in a few locations in order to um, allow for um, better access and also uh, to uh, improve the driveway to uh, common drive standards. Uh, once you enter the property, as, as mentioned in the application, this is a two-lot subdivision. Um, there is currently uh, a house which is being constructed on um, uh, lot number one, and lot number one is approximately 48 acres in size. The building permit application has been submitted and approved uh, by the town of Rhinebeck, and this house is currently under construction. So that uh, fifth, uh, that 48 acres will uh, will be the land that will be uh, attached to this residence being co constructed, which is which is located right here. And, uh, you know the parcel configuration is as such. It includes uh, mainly uh, it's, it's, uh, the property is mainly uh, pasture right now, open fields. There uh, are some woods. Are located on the eastern portion of the property with a New York State DEC wetland uh, located in the northeasterly corner. Uh, lot number two, which uh, is a proposed size of uh, a little more than uh, it's like 8.8 .8 acres, is located uh, towards the westerly portion of the property and uh, utilizes access to this location, utilizes previous uh, uh, work and uh, driveway and underground utilities that were installed by the previous owner. Um, with regard to location of, of both house sites, care can be taken to, um, you know, for preservation of the uh, of the fields and uh, consideration of the natural features of the property. Uh, the application also uh, considers um, current stormwater uh, uh, management practices. This is such a uh, uh, you know, a, a minor uh, disturbance to the land. Uh, 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 total disturbance is less than five acres and under uh, uh, New York State DEC speedy stormwater. Uh, all that is required for this particular application is uh, erosion and sediment control. Uh, and that has been uh, shown on the you know, accompanying plans uh, with, with, with the application. Uh, finally, uh, with regard to on-site water supply and sewage disposal, uh, the uh, the uh, current uh, 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 house under construction, lot number one, was originally going to uh, utilize a previously approved uh, uh, sewage disposal system, which is now to be located on lot two, and uh, so consequently a new system has been designed uh, for lot number one and application. Uh, will be made to the Dutchess County Department of Health um, uh, following uh, a, you know, preliminary approval uh, by this board. All applications are ready and design has been, has been done uh, uh, for, that, uh, for that sewage disposal system. Uh, I think that notification, the sign's up and the rest of the notification is okay? All right. Good sign, by the way. Uh, Woody and I did the site visit. Woody, if you'd like to report on what we saw. Beautiful piece of land. It's a, it's a, it's a nicely laid out where both house sites are. I think they're both complementary to each other. I think it's a very good approach. I think to emphasize what, what Mark said, the driveway and the utilities were already installed for both building sites by the previous owner who I think was going to put a house, maybe it was this guy, was going to put the house where the one house is going up and then he was going to put an accessory dwelling or something possibly over off on that little spur. So all that is in place. It's beautifully sited. I think the land is very well, it's very well situated. Uh, it, the, you're not going to see anything from uh, Wurttemberg Road. It's all over and beyond. Um, no, I, I, I certainly saw no problems with it. I know Ryan uh, represented the CAB on the site visit. You want to? Hello, 
board again. Um, Mark Ruminski actually was very nice. I got lost on my way there. Uh, Wurttemberg Road, I can never remember which it goes higher or lower or anything like that. But uh, anyway, um, he was very kind. Mark was very kind to take me around. And um, besides a few trees uh, to be cut, we find no issue with this. And uh, it looks like a great site. And uh, we wish them all the best uh, for building and constructing their two lots. Thank, Thank you. you. Members of the public, anything from the board? Yes. I'm just, I'm Susan Sheriff. I own the uh, property adjacent to the Green Park Municipal Road. And I have a question about the Green Park Road. Is it going to be a preferred residence would be? There's only two. There's only two. Right, so, and actually I met you, I met you last year. Yes. Um, when I was out there. Uh, so, so, the, so you know where, they're, where the foundation oh, is. Yeah. Yeah. Where that is. There, uh, it's actually a little bit. Uh, there's so there, that's on that knoll there, and then there's a, you know, then there's kind of then it drops down, and then there's a there's a another the next knoll over to the west. That's where the proposed house site is. That's originally the original house site that the previous owner Dajian had. Uh, for uh, placement of the primary right. house, okay. and that's it. There's only two. There's only two residences proposed on the entire 57. Oh, okay. Thank you. Anything else? Anything else from the board? Well, I believe I have a resolution here. Two resolutions. Two resolutions. Okay. The Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board here reacts as follows on a proposed action involving the May 2014 applications to the Planning Board by Eric Wallach for uh -huh. special use permit conventional subdivision under Town Code Chapter 125 zoning and for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101 subdivision of land in the matter of the proposed creation of two single family residential building lots with access by a common driveway improvement from the entirety of 57.08 acre parcel at 293 Wurttemberg Road in the rural countryside RC5 district. All is depicted within a four sheet set of engineering drawings prepared by Mark R. Grominski, PE and LS, and dated April 23, 2014, and being an unlisted action under seeker for which coordinated environmental quality review is neither required nor being conducted. One, determines a review of the EAF Part 1 and its own completion of the next EAF Part 2 in consideration of the criteria for determining significance set forth at Title 6, Part 617.7.C, NYCRR, that the proposed action as described in the application will cause no potential significant adverse impact on the environment and thus issues a negative declaration, determination of non-significance, deeming an environmental impact statement to not be required and stating such will not be prepared. Two, authorizes the chairman to so execute the full EAF and directs the planning board clerk to distribute and file the full EAF with negative declaration and annotation and other documentation as pertinent to an unlisted action in the manner set forth within the seeker implementing regulations Title VI, Part 617.12 NYCRR and in accordance with the format of the updated and recently issued seeker form. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. I will, any discussion before I pull the board? <coughs> Bob. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Melody. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Woody. Aye. And I vote aye. Moving right along. Motion closed public hearing. Oh, so good point. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Glad someone got that. Good to see that go by the board. Move fast once in a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> someone wants their dinner. Uh, the Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board, upon noticing, posting, and conduct of public hearing, excellent sign. Making of required referrals and consideration of input received hereby acts as follows in the proposed action involving the May 2014 applications to the Planning Board by Eric Wallach for special use permit conventional subdivision under Town Code Chapter 125 zoning and for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101 subdivision of land in the matter of the proposed creation of two single family residential building lots with access by a common driveway improvement from the entirety of 57.08 acre parcel at 293 Wurttemberg Road in the rural countryside RC5 district. All is depicted within a four sheet set of engineering drawings prepared by Mark Argerminski, PE and LS, and dated April 23, 2014, and being the subject of a negative declaration, determination of non-significance heretofore issued by the Planning Board. One, determines the Eric Wallach Minor Two Lot Conventional Subdivision to conform to all pertinent standards for large lot development in the RC5 district and to cause no significant adverse effects on the environment that would be avoided were cluster or some other non-conventional land subdivision technique applied and thus grants the requested special use permit to authorize the proposed conventional subdivision of the subject parcel in the manner depicted. 
Two, further grants requested subdivision plat approval for the Eric Wallach two, nine or two lot conventional subdivision and authorizes the chairman to stamp and sign the subdivision plat upon the applicant's satisfaction of each of the below conditions and or requirements within 180 calendar days of the planning board's adoption of this resolution. One, either documentation of design approval by the Dutchess County Health Department for proposed on-site water supply and sanitary sewage facilities on each of the proposed residential building lots and or the submission of a letter from a New York State licensed professional engineer stating his opinion based on specifically referenced field investigation that a sanitary disposal system serving not less than a three-bedroom dwelling can be designed and cited on each of the proposed lots in full accordance with the County Health Department standards. B. Submission of a letter from the Town of Rhinebeck Highway Superintendent approving the location and design of the common driveway access intersection at Wurdenburg Road. C. Installation of the common driveway improvement in accordance with design approved by the Planning Board Engineer. D. Submission for review by the Planning Board in consultation with the Planning Board Attorney as to sufficiency and subsequent recording in the Dutchess County Clerk's Office simultaneously with the filing of the approved subdivision plat draft of a common driveway ownership easement and maintenance agreement. E. Submission of subdivision plat drawings in the number and form specified within the Town Code Chapter 101, including thereon all required stamp seals and certification set forth therein. F. Stamping of the subdivision plat in the form required above as a non-realty non subdivision for filing purposes only by the Dutchess County Health Department. G. In consideration of the Planning Board's determination that it would not be appropriate to require the set aside of parkland within the Eric Wallach Minor Two Lot Conventional Subdivision, payment of a one lot cash in lieu of land recreation fee the Town of Rhinebeck for deposit in the Town's Recreation Trust Fund, this fee being in the amount of $3,000 as set forth in the Town's Planning and Zoning Fee Schedule. H, payment of any outstanding fees or reimbursable amounts due the Town of Rhinebeck with respect to the submission, review, and processing of this application under Town Code Chapter 101, Subdivision of Land. Could I hear a motion to approve? So so moved. Second. All righty, any discussion? Polling the board, Bob. Aye. Sharon. Aye. Melody. Aye. Woody. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Michael. I Ooh. forgot my name. Okay, um, that's it. Well, we have we have an, one other thing, special uh, core group, but I don't. Oh, core group. That's right. Yeah. Oh, Warren's here. <laughs> Warren, are you here? They're sitting patiently. There he is. Yeah. Warren's back there. We should have spoken up. We would have left. Okay. Uh, core, core Group Properties, LLC, Mill Road at 3444 Pitcher Lane, Site Plan. Initial presentation of application for amendment of approved site plan to authorize construction of deck and accessible restroom at special events venue in the RP District. Planning Board review and processing as may be timely under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning and Seeker. Okay, I think you have uh, a package which includes a larger version of the site plan. Uh, this is property probably familiar to you. I think that uh, Dan Rizzo and Lisa Rizzo were here over in Century at the time uh, as a first um, so to get the zoning change to permit that to operate as a, a barn for uh, I believe required a change in the zoning by the town board. Uh, this proposal um, just deals with the barn in which they, they have some events. Um, and the intent is to uh, not actually increase the footprint, but to put two additions on posts off the building um, show up best actually in the rendering that you have in color. There is a uh, little shed addition pop out on the south side that will enlarge one, the one existing um, restroom and add another. So there'll be two accessible restrooms uh, for the, the main floor space. And then on the west side, there will be a deck added that will provide uh, both an out sort of breakout space in the interior, but also have a second set of stairs down to grade. So uh, both of these um, additions can stand on posts, so we're not covering any more of the ground, at least with foundation. Um, and in conjunction with this, uh, DF Wheeler Engineers has designed and uh, submitted and negotiated with the health department about a, an entirely new uh, septic system to um, remediate whatever was there in the past. And I'm not sure at what stage of approval that is, but I know they've been back and forth a few times. Um, and they've also, uh, I think, addressed the water. The water was sort of interconnected between the buildings in different ways because, as you know, it was a, uh, uh, you know, a greenhouse and uh, floral sales operation and so forth. Uh, and they sorted that out too. So there's a new water uh, line serving the building and a new waste uh, sanitary disposal system serving the building. Um, and we're just tying into that. But, but this uh, application is specifically to do these two uh, modest additions to the building. The interior square footage is about 96 square feet they were looking to add, and the outside deck is just under 300 square feet. There's no uh, increase in the number of occupants in the building. Uh, will be 75 or less, uh, well under the, um, the 100 that would trigger uh, additional uh, code requirements for the building. 
Um, so that's that's basically what it's what we're trying to do here. Is we're not increasing the capacity or occupancy, simply better addressing the occupants that uh, will be there for the current use. As I recall, we had already approved the special use permit and the site plan pending certain things, one of them being the ability to provide the sewage disposal system and the restrooms, permanent restrooms on site. So this is an amendment to our previous approval. Uh, uh, might disagree with that. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and it doesn't, uh, it's just a, it's a matter of, uh, I can't call it semantics, it's a matter of procedure. The prior approval, uh, site plan approval, special permit uh, is in place. Mm -hmm. The um, prior uh, site plan approval was in October of last year. A six month uh, sunset on the satisfaction of the conditions. It's my belief, I, I think, that those conditions were not fully satisfied within the six month period. Consequently, this is not an amendment of the approved site plan, but it in fact is an application for site plan approval of a modified site plan. Uh, I think it's just a good, you know, just a, how this has to be characterized. I, I don't, I must say, I don't recall if an extension was requested. Okay. An I, extension I was not requested. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, and obviously the, you know, the final sign off never right. occurred. So yeah. uh, it, just to, from a procedural standpoint, uh, when you get to the draft procedural resolution, I, uh, paragraph number one has an either or. Uh, the either was accepts the application for amendment uh, of the site plan approval granted on such and such a date, or the or is accepts the application for site plan approval in the matter in the matter in the matter of a modified site plan, incorporating the addition of the deck and the restroom, superseding the site plan subject to the planning okay. board's resolution of October 21st. Well, you think the conditions of approval um, last time that weren't met was it getting a resolution with the health department for the SDS design? I believe that was right. Yeah, that all, all, all of that, and uh, that should have occurred. Would have had to occur, occur within. Uh, six months of October 21st uh, or an extension would have been requested right. and that right. did not occur either. And we also didn't have any plans for the actual restrooms yes. at right. that time. Yeah. Yes. So, 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 so go with the or and uh, I'll go with other the or. than that uh, the application is uh, doesn't appear to raise any issues. Uh, it's, uh, it's a complete application. Okay. The Town of Rambeth Planning Board upon review by the Zoning Enforcement Officer, I think I already did sign off on this, didn't I? Uh, actually, you talked about pending applications. Uh, or something in your review letter as ICL. Okay. And that's what caused me to go back and think about the fact that That was very good of me, wasn't it, to do that? <laughs> well, time flies, you know, such, six months. Such yes, foresight. Yes, <laughs> Seems All like right. yesterday that we did this. <laughs> All right, upon review by the Zoning Enforcement Officer, hereby acts as follows on the June 5th, 2014 application by Core Group Properties, LLC, for site plan approval in the matter of a special event venue, the Greenhouse at Rhinebeck, uh, at uh, Mill Road 33, on Mill Road at 3344 Pitcher Lane in the ORP District. Accepts the application for site plan approval in the matter of a modified site plan, incorporating the addition of a deck and accessible restroom facility. The mod wait a minute. Yeah. I want the first one. No. Don't I? Second. No, that's right. You're correct. You're right. Oh, okay. So the modified site plan superseding the site plan subject to the planning board's resolution of October 21st, 2013. Two, classifies the proposed action as an unlisted action under seeker for which coordinated environmental quality review is neither required nor will be conducted. Two, schedules a public hearing as set forth in the next notice of public hearing on the application for Monday, July 21st, 2014 at 6.35. I guess you get the first one. You could do this on the 14th if you wanted to. But do we need 30 days, though, for county and all that crap? I mean, yeah, all that is, stuff? This is, this is not referable to the county, is it? Is it within 500? It's not within 500 feet of the... The um, for everything uh, to them? Be Before you go any further, why is the word Mill Road involved in that? When I, Mill Road. Oh, I think, yeah, well, why don't we just take... Yeah. We're, okay. We're, where are you? Right. Yeah, I, I, I just road. say 35, 40, oh, 40 middle, right. middle, middle, middle Road. Middle, okay. middle, that's, middle Road. That's, middle Road, I'm sorry. Right. I thought I heard Mill and I thought I just misheard. Yeah. Well, you did hear Mill because that's what I said. Okay. When he said what you're... Right. That's right. Yep. Complete ignorance. <laughs> okay. Schedules a, pub a public hearing, um, so we don't need to wait until the 21st. We could do it on the. Do we want to? Bother? Well, hold it. Stay, stay with the 21st. Uh, what I was originally thinking is that you might not need a meeting on the 21st, but you already have Blackwood scheduled for the 21st, so you definitely yeah. will have a meeting on the 21st. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Schedules a public hearing as set forth in the next notice of public hearing on the application for Monday, July 21st, 2014, at. 
I'm not sure. I think we already scheduled Blackwood at 635. That's correct. Do we have anything else that night? No. So figures. Can we? Uh, what? Should we do this at 630? 633. 633. Yeah. Good talk, John. At 633 p.m. <laughs> and directs the clerk to undertake or otherwise cause the noticing and posting there, thereof in accordance with the requirements set forth within Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning, Section 125-77. Delegates, planning board members, okay. I'll go. I'll go. We did last Jesse time. and Bob? We'll yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. About, about them. So, Jesse okay. and Bob. You can see if anything's changed. To conduct a field visit and report their observations at the time of public hearing. Five, refers the application to the Town Conservation Advisory Board for review and comment. Six, requests further technical review of the application by the Town's planning consultant and without prejudice to information that may be presented at the public hearing or may arise on the basis of the above cited referral and field visit authorizes the planning consultant to prepare working drafts of an EAF Part 2 and 3 as may be necessary, seek a resolution and draft approval resolution for consideration by the planning board when and if timely. Could I hear a motion to approve? Motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Very good. So we'll see you at 633. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. What's on your cell? That's the best way to get a hold of you. I don't either. I don't either. I probably have one. Okay. Let's uh, we're going to step back for a minute. And uh, could I hear a re <laughs> resolution to close the public hearing on Goomer Hollow? I don't think we did that, did so we, Joni? Did we have a resolution to close the public hearing on Goomer Hollow? Oh, between yeah. between the seeker yes. and the uh, yeah, yes. we we made the seek. I think we just went from the seeker to the to the to the other one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I hear a motion to close the public hearing on Goomer Hollow? So moved. Sharon, second. <laughs> second. All in favor. Aye. Uh, okay. Good catch. Yeah, very good. <laughs> okay, I think that's the end of our agenda for this evening. Um, there goes. Woody. Motion <laughs> readjourn. Can I a second? Second. All in favor? We're good. Hang on. If I don't kill that fan tonight. <laughs> <laughs>